Google just released their new Gemini 3 model and it has been claimed to be the smartest LLM out there right now. And so in this video, I'm gonna put this to the test and show you exactly how Gemini 3 can compare to the top AI models out there, how it made vibe coding 10 times better, and finally, how we can implement it in our automations to build stronger and more scalable AI agents. And in case we haven't met, my name is Michele, and just over the past 12 months, we've helped over 40 businesses implement AI and automations and taught over 20,000 people in the process. With that being said, let's dive in. Here we have Gemini 3, which is, again, the most intelligent model yet, with a state-of-art reasoning to help you learn, build, and plan anything. Now, the first question we ask is, well, how does it compare to the other models that Gemini has? And how does it compare to the other models of OpenAI, Claude, and so on? Now, 3 Pro is best for complex tasks. 2.5 Flash is best for fast performance, and 2.5 Flash Lite is best for high volume, cost efficient tasks. So we go on the ladder here, right? The more complex it is, the better Gemini 3 is. So it really depends on your use case. And because it's a reasoning model, so it's best for complex tasks, the things that it can do is research code and things of that matter. Now the first one here is learn anything. So this is breaking down complex topics and understanding complex things, breaking it down in a really, really easy way for us to be able to understand. So this can be scanning documents, scanning PDFs, as Gemini actually has a context window which is very, very big, which means that it can take a lot of different documents. And this is for the first phase. Then we have build anything. So it's sort of like vibe coding where we put some sort of prompt here, then we press run. And what it does is that it creates the actual software based on the actual prompt, as you can see here, and now created a whole game, right? Which is 3D realistic, which is insane for a model to do within minutes. And finally, we have plan anything, which is basically using the AI agent feature instead of Gemini to take action on the things that we have to do. So in this case, we put organize my inbox, we just press run. And what it will do is it will start processing the actual task, processing the uh, what it needs to do and take action in your inbox. So actually do things. And because it's a reasoning model, it's very, very good at thinking. So it actually takes the right action at the right time with the right things. All right, so right here, we have a list of benchmarks in the science field, academic, uh, maths field. And here we have the four different models. So this is GPT 5.1, Claude Sonnet, Gemini 2.5 and Gemini 3. And as you can see on this column, the higher the percentage, the better it is. Most times, Gemini 3 Pro is better at the other models, right? Scientific knowledge, 91.9 .9 compared to 88.1, which is a very big difference. Uh, to academic reasoning, 37.5 to 26.5. We have the challenging math contest problems, which is 23.4 compared to the 0 0.5, 1 1.6 and 1. So it absolutely crushes it uh, about a 24X. For reasoning as well, 81 versus 76 and 68. And we have other metrics as well. All to say that it does seem by the metrics given to us that Gemini 3 is one of the best models out there. With that said, I'm gonna go down here to try Gemini and I'm gonna go to Google AI Studio. So press this button, try in Google Studio. And inside the studio, you get to see the actual model. If you don't see it, then go in the top right to the actual settings and you can press this right here. And let's go to the left right here and you can see down the things that it actually created. So we can browse the app gallery, which is all the things that you can create with these certain software, which are pretty much insane. So the first one is actually the website. So if I go here, to a new website, I can see that it created this from a single prompt, right? A website that previously we needed to use tons of softwares for is simply made it using a single prompt. Now, making websites isn't something new. We can still do them with Lovable or Bold, but it's the detail of the website, it's the cursor, it's the fact that it's super dynamic with things and it does it within minutes. Now there's a lot more you can do to this, but just the fact that it's super, super dynamic, super, super cool in terms of the actual design is something that previous websites just did not have. Just because a lot of the websites, they use the same colors, the same fonts, the same sort of style, especially when you're vibe coding. Uh, but it seems like the creativeness of the design patterns for the Gemini 3 is pretty much on top. And a cool thing that it also has is the immersive games in 3D worlds. So if I go here, I can see that we have a game that it just created using a single prompt, which is still nuts. Um, we can break it. We can rebuild it. Eagles. And it rebuilds the actual thing. But look at the the way that it actually looks and feels. Right, this right here is, is something that previously we we're not able to make. And if we were, it would have taken us about 10 to 20 prompts to make. Well, here you can do it within minutes just by using a single prompt. Of course, it does come down to how complex the prompt is and how detailed it is because shit in, shit out, right? But the fact that we're even capable of doing something like this has opened up so many opportunities for AI agencies to be able to go out there and actually provide value to businesses. And right here, I have a full prompt, basically outlining a website that I want done. So I'm gonna copy this, I'm gonna paste it here, I press build. And the way it looks is pretty much the same as lovable, bold, uh, and so on. We get to see the actual code that is being written. So this is pretty normal, but it's the actual website that it makes or software that it builds 
that is unmatched compared to the other models. All right, so we can see here, it just made the website. On the left-hand side, we get to see the steps that it did, and it ran for about 120 seconds, so two minutes. If I go full screen, I can see, look at the cursor and the way it looks, the way it feels, the buttons. We have the ECI framework, educate, consult, implement, the case studies, my name, capabilities right here. And this looks so dynamic, which is insane. Um, client voices and so on, and the form as well. Now, making a website isn't something crazy that we couldn't do before. We could still do it with other softwares as well. It's just the extent to which, or the extent to how dynamic or how creative you're gonna get with the website. Because right here, we have the text. It looks very dynamic, it looks clean. Well, previously the website, we're all just using the same exact framework or the same exact design patterns as well. And so this right here, alongside building softwares and so on, is really where Gemini shines in the vibe coding world. All right, so finally, how does this apply to our automations and how does it change the way that we make automations? So first one here, I can go to Gemini. You can find it right here, Gemini. Just choose an action. Let's just choose message a model, which is texting the actual model inside Gemini. All we have to do is connect our account. You can go here. We need an API key. So go back to Google Studio. We're gonna go down to get an API key and you can create an API key right here. Name it whatever you want. So test and attend. Select a project. If you don't have one, just create one right now. Just name it and attend test. And you can press create a key right here. And now you can copy the key and you want to bring it back to the actual workflow. Just paste it here, put it a name and press save. And now you have Gemini successfully connected to your Anaten account. Now bear in mind that you do have to set up billing right here. So go to this button and then set up the billing right here. Put your details and add $5 of credits so you can actually use the model itself. Then you have text. So this is the thing that we're changing. The action that we're doing is messaging a model and the model itself is gonna be Gemini 3. You can find it right here, Gemini 3 Pro Preview. Now we can just say hello, press execute step. And this will now use the actual model when giving us an answer on the right right here. Hello, how can I help you today? All right, one of the biggest use cases when it comes to using Gemini 3 compared to other models is the way that it analyzes images. So right here, I have a workflow where we have an input, which is the image from Telegram. Then we actually analyze the image in three different ways, with Gemini, OpenAI, and Claude, before sending it back so we get to see the actual difference in each model. I wanna press execute workflow. What I'm gonna do here is take a screenshot of my screen, paste it here, and then send it through. And what this will now do is that it will download the file and then send it to Gemini as the first model to be able to analyze this. Then we have OpenAI, and then finally Opus 4 from Claude before sending it back to our Telegram. As you can see here, we have three different image descriptions. So first one is the Gemini image description. So based on the image, this is what it is. One, section one, OpenAI 3 Google, OpenAI 4.0 ChatGPT, section three, two, Telegram window, left overlay. This is really, really detailed. Then we have OpenAI's, which is a lot shorter and it goes not much in depth. There's not much analyzation of the actual thing. So I just put it in the middle. And here we have Gemini image description. So we have Gemini describing the whole image in very, very, very much detail. Where we have section one, two, telegram window, three, the presenter, browse interface. Then we have open AI description, which is just two simple paragraphs. So obviously it didn't analyze it. And by the way, there was the exact same prompt. So there's nothing different. And here we have just open AI giving us a general overview of the image. And then finally cloud which is even more general. As you can see here, Gemini clearly beats all of them because of the detail that it goes through when analyzing the image right here. And so this right here can be virtually applied to any kind of use case that has to do with image generation and analyze the images right here. In terms of pricing itself, for a context length of less than 200,000, we have $2 per 1 million tokens and the output is $12 per 1 million token. Whilst if it's more than 200,000, we have $4 for input, we have $4 for 1 million tokens and then $18 one minute token. Now this right here is a bit more expensive than the other models of Gemini and even OpenAI and Claude, but just understand that this is a model that is more for reasoning, more for complex thinking. And so the tasks that you give it are not the easy tasks that you can give a really cheap model. They're the tasks that require a bit more reasoning to it. And if you want the full system for free, so you can import it into your own account and play around with it, then check out the second link down below in my free school community. And if you're a nine to five working professional and you wanna start and scale your AI agency to 10K a month or more within the next 90 to 180 days, then do check out the first thing down below, which is a one-to-one -one mentorship program where you get to work with me one to one. Bear in mind that we only have 20 spots left until the end of the year. So do check it out while it's still open. And if you like this video, that you're going to love this video up here, where I show you exactly how to generate AI agents and AI workflows in any 10 using the Cloud MCP. With that being said, I hope you found value from this video and I'll see you in the next one.